I miss the Israeli girls. Are they all gone? Okay. Did everybody sleep okay? Anyone get more than three hours? Just curious. <laughs> Anyone still have the after effects of their sleeping pill in them like I do? <laughs> if I'm a little loopy, it's because I took it at 2 a.m. I just couldn't. You too? Oh, my gosh. I still, uh, my mouth tastes like I gargled pennies. Have you ever had that, that sensation from the, uh, from the metal? Ugh. Anyway, but I'm feeling good otherwise. And this class that we're going to learn now, we're going to do it in a style more traditional, something you probably haven't done before, or if you have, I'm excited to, um, to take this uh, little trip with you. You have on your seat, you might be sitting on it, a source sheet. You don't want to sit on it. You want to pick it up and you want to use it because we're going to work through these concepts together. This is the kind of learning that got me in the first place. It thrilled me beyond belief. So I want to do it with you. But before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about the way that we learn. Over 30 years ago, a gentleman by the name of Howard Gardner, anybody in education here? Put up your hand if you're in education. Oh my gosh, I'm preaching to the choir. All right. A guy called Howard Gardner wrote a book, a very famous book on the multiple intelligences. Is anyone familiar with that concept? Put up your hand. Awesome. And it was this groundbreaking idea that somehow education needed to go through the varying different systems of learning, as though not everyone came to knowledge or wisdom or information in the same way. And it's interesting because my children went to a school that was a multi-sensory, multi-dimensional, multi-intelligence system. And what they do, or what they did, was they understood that people come to things in their own way. That essentially, we have a self that is going to have a strength, or if you will, a default position, that is going to be the place for us to best learn. And he came up with seven, there are now eight different, or what he called multiple intelligences. They ran the gamut from physical intelligence to naturalistic intelligence, emotional intelligence, interpersonal and intrapersonal intelligences. If you're familiar with these, you'll know that it means that everybody comes into things differently. But there is a fundamental problem in the human condition, and we talked about this a bit yesterday, and that is that each and every one of us think that our intelligence is the intelligence to have. And whatever someone else has that's different than yours or makes your way of communication cloudy or difficult for them somehow implies that they're not so smart, not so bright. The school systems, unfortunately, cripple anyone who thinks in any intelligence other than the analytical, mathematical system. And if you, yourself, or you have a child going through the system who is unable to excel in that particular pathway, you will know that it's not a lot of nachas to be part of that system, to parent that child, or even to push yourself through. Whenever I hear a new idea, as I did when I read Howard Gardner's book, I look to find the initial source of that, which is always, always in our system, always in the Torah. And it always thrills me. One of my favorite little games to play is to learn something new and to find out where it first began. So on your sheet in front of you, each and every one of us have an obligation to dig deep and find ourselves, to question how many times we cut the ends off the roast beef in our practices and in our thoughts, to lech lecha, do the work, and to respectfully decide who it is that we want to be and how we can become that. 
Remember, if it breaks, fix it with gold. And it will be more beautiful than it was before it began. Being a woman is a profoundly powerful thing. Our light is so intense. Our strength is so profound. Our job as parents is to encourage our children to go to themselves too. Make sure that you offer them a system that is not subjective or dependent on your default spot, but rather has the capacity of building true, independent thinking human beings. Now, speaking of true, independent thinking human beings, we have a very serious treat. Most of us are Americans or Canadians, so you may not know who Lee Hila Pete is, but she's incredible. This woman is a nachas machine. Let me just tell you why. I'll, I'll read you just a little bit of her bio. She's an author and a journalist. She has a weekly newspaper column. She writes on contemporary wish, women's issues, and I'm going to tell you something. All my friends who live here tell me they obsessively wait for her column. She's written a cookbook. She wrote the book, Aisha Chayel, Women of Valor. She is a true feminist. A feminist is a woman who understands the power of a woman and her choices and is not dictated to. She is a woman who went to herself. She also was a photographer. She traveled around with that. Frankly, this is the woman who represents what a Jewish woman can be, and it's my honor and privilege to introduce her. This is Lee Lapid. 